ladies, fellas, you know, guys watch the show too. This is Chase, 305 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I wanted to bring you guys a season two, episode five of Between Women Review slash Summary because this episode kind of really hit close to home and I could really identify with it. So I wanted to share my personal experiences on some of the dialogues and things that occurred in this episode. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Opening scene, we hear Alicia giving out someone's address to who we now know as Jeremiah, Miller's baby daddy. And that whole Jeremiah and Madison showing up at Miller's doorstep was staged by her. And I'm so glad that the plan failed. I'm glad that Miller had a counter scheme and she sent um, Natalie to, I don't know, the store to go shopping for something away to the mayor's event. And <clears throat> I have to say that Miller, she really gets me, man. These scenes that she had to cry and, you know, be like extra dramatic, she really does the damn thing, you know. So shout out to her. I really hope she get you know, opportunities in the future uh, to do bigger things, but she um, she really played that very well when they showed up on her doorstep. Anyway, moving right along. Madison, she's beautiful. She's well-mannered, respectful, funny, smart, well-groomed. She's a little Miller. You can't deny that. We absolutely cannot deny that. Um, Miller has no idea how to raise a child, but she is definitely up to the challenge. And I think she exemplifies, in my mind, what a real mother would do for their child. Now, I don't know the situation exactly if, um, or why she's been so estranged from Madison all these years. But I'm sure that, you know, it will come to light. And <clears throat> we will most certainly be waiting to see how you know, she uh, ended up having Madison in the first place. She rushes Madison over to Winnie's house, thankfully interrupting her sex life with Gabby because I want so much better for, for Winnie. I would have been so disappointed, so hurt if she went down on Gabby. Seeing that she got her little boy toy on the side and she double dipping or whatever. I absolutely hate that, man. Me and my girl was just talking about that today. Like, why is it so hard to just choose? Do you want dick or do you want pussy? There's no I'm I'm confused. You just, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> but like I was saying, Miller brings um Madison over to Winnie's house so she doesn't run into Natalie, but I, I don't know, man. Miller, she's wrong. Like, she's just all wrong. For her to not think that Natalie will understand, for her to not think that Natalie will support this situation, I don't know. I mean, I know she has a past, and I... I gotta say, I gotta be honest myself, it's not that easy to be straight up and honest and, and you know, just tell your wife everything about your past. Especially, especially when you're trying to build a future with her. But most importantly, if you live the life of Miller Harris. Yeah. But Natalie has always been there though, so I'm kind of confused. Like, why did Miller just deal with it like right then and there. I mean, I don't think that Natalie is the type that'll leave her because of this, you know, because Miller took so long to tell her, but I don't know. I mean, I think she'll be there to support Miller through whatever and she'll be down for whatever. Kind of remind me of my girl. But anyway, uh, uh, nasty ass Lucas. <sighs> This guy really gets under my skin. Like, really. He meets 
Zoe in Ikea. Light bulb. What straight man you know? Openly shops in Ikea. No worries. I'll wait. Okay. That's what I thought. You know, so that should have been a... And actually, it was an eye-opener for um, Zoe because she showed up, pulled his car while they was at uh, dinner or lunch or whatever at their little meeting and asked him if he was about that life. And he showed up, denied it, like the punk kids did not mean to say that, but he denied it. But, um, wow, I really didn't mean to say that, fellas. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. But anyway, um, I really hope that they don't go to bed. Because Zoe's a really pretty girl, and I want better for her, too. But anyway, I'm feeling, like, really, really happy for Sunny right now. <laughs> I'm glad, you know, she finally found somebody. She cute, too, now. She kind of remind me of, um, what's the name? Uh, Alicia. Look like they might be cousins in real life. You never know. Small girl. Uh, moving right along. Alicia, yeah, she is completely irked by the fact that, uh, Natalie did not find out about Madison. And at this point, she shows us that she has another card to play, which hopefully Miller catches that too, but it wouldn't be a series if she did. Uh, but Natalie, babe, oh my gosh, she really, really, really gets to me. Um, the fact that she don't even entertain Alicia, that is so fucking sexy to me, man. Ladies, it's called security, mm -hmm. and she wears it very well. very well it looks good on her i must say uh the fact that miller always reassures her that she has absolutely no reason to worry about alicia or any other woman for that matter that's beautiful and sometimes that's all it takes is a little reassurance fellas get on your job uh now give me a second because this next scene really took me for a loop i mean i knew that Winnie would find out eventually, but I wasn't expecting this. I was not expecting to see Winnie in the corner of Jackson's room when Gabby come up in there to put on her little sexy lingerie. I mean, I probably watched that scene like 10 times now. Wow, I mean, that, that really, really did something for me because, you know, every woman, every woman has a scent. Every woman. And I can't imagine, I can't even envision smelling my woman's scent on another woman's bed, let alone a nigga. Really, Gabby? I want so much better for Winnie. But, <laughs> she gave Gabby the ultimate suggestion. I suggest you beat me there. <laughs> Those words were cutting. And I gotta say, little mama definitely deserves an Oscar for that dialogue. <laughs> How about that? So we expect Jackson's place to be burning down. Maybe in the next episode or so. Seeing that Gabby left in a hurry after getting this ultimatum. Uh, she was about to cook dinner for Jackson. She turned the stove on and never turned it off before she left. So we expect this place to be burning down. But hopefully he catches it. But you never know. So... We find out that CJ is a uh, transgender. I'm so relieved because I was confused for the longest. I thought that she was just like a, a stud that worked out a lot. But, um, because, you know, the pitch kind of still up there a little bit. But, when we see her in that strap, that... I think carried a lot of curiosities, especially for straight women, about how we fuck. So, thank you, CJ. Thank you, directors. Really appreciate that. Um, but putting a dildo in the fridge, Sonny? Really? The fridge. Yeah. Lastly, I, um, uh, I just want to say for you guys out there who were disappointed about the last scene. Ray isn't coming back. 
period. I mean, she might have a cameo, but when you when you make an effort to follow someone's work, you make an extra effort to keep up with them, see what they're doing. So I suggest you fans out there follow her on Twitter at Nola Look Alive. She has a Reverb Nation. And by doing these things, I'm led to believe that she, she's not coming back. So, shout out to Dread. Shout out to Lachey. I have to say that you guys on screen, relationship does so much for me in my personal relationship with my woman. Um, you guys give us so much to talk about. And before I go, I just want to say the fact that Miller is a touch me not stud goes way beyond what we can see on camera, you know, up until the minute. But I think she'll let Natalie tell that. And I'm so excited to see what that's going to be like. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Check it out. Shout out to the producers, the cameraman, boy, girl. I see you. <laughs> Um, also they make a crew, yo, women make up always on point. Um, make sure you follow, y'all follow everybody on Instagram, they keep us up to date, especially Lachey and, uh, Winnie, well, I don't mean to keep calling her Winnie, but, Toya Sessions, woo, yes, uh, y'all follow Dread too, she rarely, she rarely be on Twitter, but, she be on there the time. Follow me, Chase305 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Yo. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, also, too, um, Michelle Daniel. If you don't believe in your dreams, wait. Damn, what she said? Um, if you don't believe in your dreams, no one will. I think that was the opening uh, quote on episode three. Baby. That quote has taken me so far, thus far. Thank you so much. Thank you to the whole cast, the whole production team, everybody that has anything to do with Between Women. Thank you guys so much for bringing us a beautiful show, something that we can rely on every, every two weeks. So, thank you again. Uh, I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Be easy.